welcome back for another virtual story time. I'm Miss Nicole here in the courtyard of the Key West Tropical Forest and Botanical Garden, and I want to say happy summer break. I know a lot of you have just finished up school and now you're on your break for the summer. So for today's story, we're going to read Do Princesses Live in Sandcastles? And I chose this book because now with summer break approaching, a lot of you go to the beach, spend your time out on the boat, and go on vacation. Do princesses spend the whole day at the shore? The beach is a marvelous place to explore. What kind of creature made these tracks in the sand? What do you think it could be? They're made by sea turtles who nest on the land. Why do the waves seem to stop at the beach? I think that's as far as the ocean can reach. Does a princess build sandcastles with shovels and pails? I brought extra tools for those minor details. They're building their own sandcastle here. Does a princess ride on a purple seahorse? With a dolphin in tow, then I say, of course. Seagulls have been circling for almost an hour. They're on the lookout for fish to devour. When a princess goes snorkeling, does she have to wear fins? Well, that's when her job as a mermaid begins. Have you ever been snorkeling? Yeah, it's lots of fun. What do those hermit crabs have on their backs? What's on a hermit crab's back? I think it's a shell. They carry their homes like giant backpacks. Does a princess get sand between all of her toes? You'd be surprised all of the places it goes. Watch me catch waves on my new boogie board. Your epic attempts deserve an award. How in the world will we ever spot whales? Let's sit on this hill and watch for their tails. How does this shell make the sound of the sea? That has always been a mystery to me. Have you ever put a seashell up to your ear so you can hear the ocean? Are princesses strong and enormously brave? They stand at the edge and shout, bring it on, wave! Why does the ocean make that glittery light? It comes when the sun hits the ripples just right. sparkle like the ocean. So this fun story about building sandcastles and doing all those fun, exciting things at the beach made me want to make our own sand. So for our craft today, we're going to make our own moon sand. So here's mine. So all you'll need for this is some flour and some oil. So you can use vegetable oil, or olive oil or something else along that sort. And that way your moon sand that you create is non-toxic, edible, safe for the environment and children. So you can find the tutorial on how to make this by going to our Google Classroom at keywest.garden education. So I made mine, I mixed together the right amount of oil with flour and you can also add food coloring to your change of colors. So mine's orange moon sand. So this sand is nice and squishy and fun. Lots you can do with it. So I have a little cup here. And I thought if I pack it into the cup, I can kind of build a little sand castle. And then I also have a little turtle and a centipede, which I can squish into the sand. 
and I can almost make a fossil of them. So this is super fun to play with. Safe, edible, a little messy, but easy to wash off. So I hope you guys have fun with this. And for our activity today, I'm gonna send you guys on a beach cleanup because it's really important that we take care of our beaches because whatever gets washed away in the ocean can hurt the wildlife and the coral and our whole ecosystem. So if you ever find trash at the beach, you should clean it up. So let's head over onto our Key West Tropical Forest and Botanical Garden kayak ramp and we'll do a little cleanup over there. I'm here at our kayak launch to do my beach cleanup. So there's a few things that you should always have for a beach cleanup. You should have water because you need to stay hydrated when you're outside in this hot sun. And you should also have sunscreen on to protect your skin. You should wear gloves to protect your hands from all the germs and sharp objects and a bucket or a trash bag to collect trash in. And then once you collect your things, you can sort things out about what can be recycled and what can't be. So I see right here, this bottle had washed up on the shore. That's something that could be recycled. So I could have two buckets and do recycle and trash. So all around me here, stuff washes up in the mangroves. The mangroves help protect us with hurricanes and they also help with some of the litter. But it's good that you come around and help clean up. So whether you go do a beach cleanup at your local shore or just while you're there, you just pick up trash that you see, that makes a huge difference to help our local ecosystem and the bigger picture for global warming. So thanks for joining me for this week's story time. See you next week.